best that I can do, but I'm sorry, you're just not good enough. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most well-written movies that have more than one surprising revelation. So, spoiler alert. Every dancer in the world wants your role. No, this is different. She's after me. Number 30, Saw 2. The first Saw ended in a killer twist, with John Kramer rising from the bathroom floor and revealing himself to Adam. So the filmmakers thought, how can we top that for the sequel? The answer was, include all the twists. We learn that the test house is actually connected to the dilapidated bathroom from the first movie. We learn that the footage that Matthews was watching wasn't actually live, but pre-recorded days in advance. It's not live. We learn that Daniel was inside John's safe the entire time, mere feet away from his father. And finally, we learn that Amanda is now working with John, and it helped set up Matthews' test. Hello, Eric. You probably don't even remember me, but you changed my life once. You sent me to prison. It's just twist after twist, and we are here for it. Number 29, A Simple Favor. This thriller from director Paul Feig updates the noir genre, bringing its twisty tropes into the 21st century. I especially want to thank everybody who's written in to ask about Emily. It's been four days now. It all starts with Stephanie Smothers, a young vlogger who befriends the luxurious Emily Nelson. I guess I'm probably not the kind of person you're normally friends with. Oh, you do not want to be friends with me. Trust me. Emily eventually goes missing and is later found dead at a summer camp in Michigan. So begins a story so full of twists and turns, it's impossible to recap here. It involves all the typical noir tropes, like life insurance policies, identical twins, fake shootings, double crosses, and dead people being not so dead after all. Emily? No, 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 Emily's dead. Oh, no, have you forgotten already? Where are you? I'm in heaven, watching over you. The script is mind-bending and meticulously crafted, weaving a story that engages viewers from beginning to end. As shocked as you guys are about these turns of events, I can assure you, nobody is more stunned than me. Number 28, Buried. Ryan Reynolds flexes his dramatic chops in Buried. He plays Paul Conroy, a man who is buried alive with a Blackberry. Uh, to my wife, Linda Conroy, uh, I leave you the $700 of my personal savings. This phone allows him to contact the outside world, and he learns that a man named Mark White recently escaped a similar situation. Who is Mark White? A kid from New Hampshire, 26 years old, med student, came over here to help out local doctors. By the end of the film, Paul is informed that a rescue team has learned of his location and is on the way to save him. They're coming for me. We are practically there already. Yeah, you, you have to hurry. We are full. You have, you have to hurry this, this stand. You just hang in there three more minutes. And that is when we're hit with a brutal one-two punch. First, we learn that the rescue team is not actually at Paul's burial site. We simultaneously learn that the team had actually dug up Mark White, meaning he was never rescued in the first place. I'm so sorry. What is, what is, I'm sorry. What is it? It's Mark White. He brought us to Mark White. It is a horrific ending without a shred of happiness. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Where are you? Ah. 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 <laughs> Number 27, Wild Things. Trashy but absorbing, Wild Things is an erotic thriller starring Matt Dillon as Sam Lombardo. So who's washing your Jeep this weekend, Mr. Lombardo? Sam is a high school guidance counselor who is accused of assault by two students, Susie Toller and Kelly Van Ryan. But these are serious charges and we need to know everything that happened between you and Mr. Lombardo. Are you ready? So begins another story that, like a simple favor, is full of complex twists and turns. For one thing, the allegations were made up as part of a scam, and we learn that Sam was in on it the entire time. But that is certainly not all. You! You're dead! No, I'm not. We also get secret alliances, crooked cops, fake out deaths, secret masterminds, and plenty of double crossing. Wild things indeed. 
I told you they were going to make us look stupid. Hey, you're right. Number 26, Snatch. One of Guy Ritchie's finest moments, Snatch tells a complex story involving a stolen diamond and dirty boxing. Make sure your man goes down in the fourth. You understand me now, don't you, Turkish? The climax of the film reveals that Mickey O'Neill has been acting the chess master the entire time. We learn that he has been betting on himself to win his boxing matches, having manipulated vicious gangster Brick Top into believing he would throw the fights. Therefore, Brick Top would drive up the odds and Mickey would get a major cash out. We also learn that he pre-planned the final fight as part of a retribution scheme against Bricktop. That is when o'clock the pikey had money riding on himself. That's the reason the bastard never goes down when he's supposed to. Finally, we hilariously realize that the missing diamond was actually swallowed by Vinny's dog and has been inside its stomach the entire time. Thank God for that. <laughs> Number 25, Black Swan. Natalie Portman won an Oscar playing Nina Sayers, a ballet dancer who slowly loses her mind while competing for a prestigious role. Not so controlled. Seduces. The climax of the film is a mind bender, with Nina stabbing her rival Lily to death with a shard of glass. It's my turn. <laughs> but Lily later appears to congratulate Nina on her performance, revealing that she is obviously still alive. Hey, you were amazing. This is just the start, as Nina quickly realizes that she had actually stabbed herself with the glass. She then seemingly dies on stage after performing a flawless routine. It's a horrific ending, and director Darren Aronofsky gets his point across with clever, twisty clarity. My little princess, I always knew you had a human. Come on, let's take you back. <gasps> Number 24, The Wicker Man. A classic piece of pagan horror, The Wicker Man sees Sergeant Neil Howie traveling to an isolated island to search for a missing girl named Rowan Morrison. You are liars. You are despicable little liars. Rowan Morrison is a schoolmate of yours, isn't she? Well, one thing leads to another and he's burned alive inside a giant Wicker Man. Let's back up. Howie eventually learns that Rowan is alive and well, but is likely being sacrificed by the island's citizens to ensure a good crop. But the truth comes hard and swift when he finds Rowan and attempts to rescue her, but she happily returns to the Islanders. Did I do it right? You did it beautifully! Dear little Rowan. Howie then learns that Rowan was just bait. He is the true sacrifice. Well, don't you see that killing me is not going to bring back your apples? He takes the bait, gets captured by the Islanders, and is burned alive while they merrily sing a folk tune. Number 23, Moon. Duncan Jones crafted a modern sci-fi masterpiece with Moon, which explores heavy themes involving artificial intelligence. Sam Bell is mining helium-3 on the moon when he crashes his harvester, falling unconscious. When he regains consciousness in the moon base, he returns to the harvester and sees himself laying in the driver's seat. Plot twist one. Who is he? Who is he? We need to get him to the infirmary. The base's AI system Gertie then reveals that both are clones of the original Sam Bell, who returned home long ago. Plot twist two. What about the original Sam? Huh? I'm the original Sam! Clone Sam then discovers hundreds of stored copies, revealing that the mining company has been using clones to harvest the helium. Plot twist three, and one that sends the movie into its deep emotional core. Pretty, we're not programmed. We're people, you understand? Number 22, Vertigo. This is a suitably named movie with a dizzying story. Scotty, do you believe that someone out of the past Someone dead can enter and take possession of a living being? No. Retired policeman Scotty Ferguson is working as a PI and is hired by an old schoolmate named Gavin Elster. Gavin wants Scotty to follow his wife Madeline, as he believes that she's up to something. <laughs> 
so begins an impossibly convoluted scheme that Scotty slowly begins to unravel. Where do you go? No, what I takes you away? You. When you jumped into the bay, you didn't know where you were. You guessed, but you I didn't, didn't know. Jump. I didn't jump. The story is packed with twists, like the reveal that a woman named Judy was impersonating Madeline, that Judy was hired by Gavin to do so, that the real Madeline was murdered by Gavin, and that her death was staged as an act of desperation. You were the copy. You were the counterfeit, weren't you? Was she dead or alive? Dead. Dead. He's broken her neck. He's broken her neck. It's an endless web of deceit, and you need a Charlie Kelly evidence board to figure it all out. Number 21. Identity What begins as a Christie-esque murder mystery ends with a divisive twist that shatters the movie's sense of reality. Carolyn Suzanne was murdered. What? Who's Carolyn Suzanne? Oh, what? Ten strangers are trapped inside a motel and systematically killed one by one. The twist reveals that these characters are actually personalities inside the mind of a mass murderer named Malcolm Rivers. He's had a very troubled life. He was arrested four years ago and convicted of the murder of six people in a violent rampage. They're being killed off under the orders of Malcolm's psychiatrist, Dr. Malik, with the hopes of eliminating the homicidal personality. Why are you telling me this? Because you, Edward, are one of his personalities. That's the major twist, but the movie ends with another. It's revealed that young Timmy is actually the homicidal personality, and that he faked his death earlier in the movie. Timmy. The twists can be difficult to digest, and they had viewers either gleefully shocked or shaking their heads in disappointment. Number 20, Knives Out. This whodunit begins as all good mysteries do, with a rich dead guy, a greedy family, and a will. Oh my god. Is there a problem? The first twist comes when the audience learns the victim, Harlan Thromby, slit his own throat to protect Marta, his nurse, who accidentally mixed up his medication, giving him a lethal dose of morphine. Your mom is still undocumented, and if this is your fault, She'll be found out and at best deported, and your family will be broken. But we're not going to let that happen, are we? The story unfolds in Agatha Christie-inspired style, plus a truly incredible cable-knit look from Chris Evans. And then the second twist hits. And you know, if Marta was responsible for his death, even unintentionally, the Slayer rule would nullify the change will and you would get your share back. Turns out Harlan's grandson Ransom switched the medications before Marta did. Everyone swarmed in and there is no possible way you can get to Marta's medical bag to retrieve the vials. So Harlan didn't take the morphine after all. Well, at least Ransom and his sweater got what was coming to them. A face full of puke. Number 19, The Talented Mr. Ripley. Italy filled with golden beaches, delicious food, and murder? If you're Tom Ripley, that is definitely on the list. Dickie Greenleaf? Who's that? It's Tom. Tom Ripley. This thriller follows Ripley, who's sent to Italy by a wealthy man to convince the man's son Dickie to return. You're breaking my ribs! What? Ripley is quickly swept up in Dickie's extravagant lifestyle, befriending and becoming obsessed with him. You've had a great run, though. Haven't we? Well, we'll still go to Venice. I mean, we could, we could stick to that plan. Things escalate until, in a shocking turn of events, Ripley kills Dickie and then proceeds to steal his identity. Shut, Shut up! Dickie, Dickie, Dickie! Like a little girl all the time! Shut up! Some friend, right? Ripley digs himself so far into a hole, it seems inevitable he'll be caught. So, where are you hiding him? It's impossible, isn't it? Is he really not here? But in a second twist, as Ripley's plans are about to be thwarted, Dickie's father shows up and absolves Ripley of any blame. Mr. Greenlee feels that there was a silent promise in Dickie's letter to you, which he intends to honor. Right before he commits another murder. Number 18, Frailty. Stolen identities are always great fodder for plot twists, but this one goes above and beyond. Demons are taking over the world. Adam? In Frailty, Fenton Meeks tells the FBI his recently deceased brother Adam is responsible for a series of unsolved killings. Adam is the God's hand killer, Agent Doll. He's the one you're looking for. 
Clinton says Adam thought he'd been chosen by God to get rid of demons and could see a person's wrongdoings simply by touching them, a claim Fenton did not believe. If you think this is creepy, you're right. And it's about to get worse. Turns out the Fenton we meet is actually Adam. In the valley, oh. Adam murdered Fenton because, in a shocking second twist, Adam can really sense evil in people, and he knew Fenton was responsible for the killings. God's will shall be done, we guess. And I got you. Maybe. But that's not gonna bring your mother back, is it? Number 17, Us. Jordan Peele's second feature film had big shoes to fill, and on the plot twist front, he delivered. Huh. Who is that? When we first meet the tethered in this horror show, we have absolutely no idea who they are or where they came from. All we know is they look like Adelaide and her family, just a lot freakier. Once upon a time. Finally, before the gorgeous final fight scene, Red, Adelaide's tethered, reveals the government created the tethered to control humans but something bad happened and they were abandoned. They created the tethered so they could use them to control the ones above. Like puppets. Government conspiracy gone horribly wrong is already a great twist, but the final reveal that the Adelaide we know is actually a tethered who switched places with her human counterpart as a child is truly jaw-dropping. Look at you. It's not my fault, she left. Look at you. It's not my fault, she left. Yeah, well, look at me. Look at you. <laughs> Number 16, The Sting. Heist movies, they're chock full of twists, but The Sting delights us more than most. Glad to meet you, kid. You're a real horse's ass. Luther said I could learn something from you. Paul Newman and Robert Redford play Henry Gondorf and Johnny Hooker, two grifters trying to con a mob boss by creating a sham horse race betting parlor. We're gonna put down 400 grand next week. At five to one odds, that's two million. 20% of that is yours if you stick with us. Got a system coming? This film has numerous players, fake identities, and motives to keep track of. But one of the biggest surprises comes when FBI agent Polk forces Hooker to play informant and give Gondorf up. We've got a tip that Gondorf is gonna run a con on the south side here. All you've gotta do is tell us when he's gonna play his chum. We come in at the sting, make the pinch, and you walk out free as a bird. When the FBI raids the parlor, Gondorf shoots Hooker for his betrayal, and then Polk shoots Gondorf. Everyone dies, except they don't. Okay, Henry, all clear. <laughs> Turns out Agent Polk is also a con man, and Gondorf and Hooker stage the whole thing. You gotta love the con within a con, within a con. <laughs> It's a nice con, Hickey. I thought you were the feds myself when you came in. <laughs> no trouble, Henry. Snyder went for it all the way. Number 15, Gone Baby Gone. Sometimes twists can take us to very dark places, and that is exactly what happens in Gone Baby Gone. Well, she's uh, quiet. She tries very hard to be a good girl. What about Helene? Her friends, people she hangs out with. Private investigators Patrick and Angie join up with the police department and start working the case of Amanda McCready, a little girl who was abducted from her home. They eventually come into contact with the kidnappers and set up an exchange for the girl's life. Jeez, we got your money. It was buried in Ray's backyard. We want to give it back to you in exchange for Amanda McCready. In a tragic turn of events, the little girl dies after a fight breaks out during the trade. It was an accident. But as always, it's not that simple. Patrick later learns that police detectives staged Amanda's kidnapping to make some quick cash. What's more, Amanda is still alive. Hey. Hi. How are you? She's living with the police captain, who lost his own daughter years earlier. We're just trying to give a little girl a life. Wasn't your life to give. Number 14, The Departed. Do you smell a rat? Because this movie is full of them. The story follows Colin Sullivan, who is working for mob boss Frank Costello as a mole in the Boston PD. Thank you, Frank. You earned it. 
No more pencils, no more books. And Billy Costigan, an undercover cop trying to infiltrate Costello's gang. Delivering cannolis or something? <laughs> Unfortunately for the characters in this movie, pretty much all the plot twists lead to someone's death. You know I'd never give you up. You're like a... More like a son. When it's revealed that Costello is an FBI informant himself, Sullivan kills him. I am killing you. When Costigan finds out Sullivan is the rat, he's killed by another dirty cop. Costello was gonna sell us to the FBI who Sullivan then kills to clear his own name. And finally, in the best twist of all, Detective Dignam, who Sullivan wronged, comes back and kills him. Okay. Cue the rat on the windowsill. Number 13, Scream. Back in the 90s, Scream basically revitalized horror movies and did so in twisty turny fashion. The setup is simple. There's a serial killer on the loose, and he's targeting high schooler Sydney Prescott and her friends. The audience spends most of the movie trying to figure out who the killer behind the terrifying mask is. Corn syrup. Same stuff they use for pig's blood and carry. In the third act, not only is it revealed that the killer is Sydney's boyfriend, Billy, but also that he's not working alone. That's right, there are two killers. What's the matter, Sydney? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Billy and Stu have already killed so many people, and it's looking like they'll kill Sydney too. When, plot twist, it turns out that two of their presumed victims, Gail and Randy, were not dead after all. Careful. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. Number 12, Spider-Man Homecoming. Sometimes a movie pulls off two plot twists that don't feed into one another. And that's what happens in this MCU joint. I guess you already have a date to homecoming. Actually, I'm so busy planning and I never really got around to that part, so. Peter Parker just wants one day of normalcy and hopes he can get it when he takes his crush Liz to the homecoming dance. Open the door for her. Mm -hmm. Tell her she looks nice, but mm -hmm. not too much because that's creepy. But when Peter meets Liz's father, he realizes it's Vulture one of Peter's nemeses. He must be Peter. Seriously, it's hard enough to meet the dad. No need to throw supervillains into the mix. Hey, Pedro. The second plot twist comes later. Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man, gives Peter the opportunity to become an Avenger, something Peter has always wanted. How are you good? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'd rather just stay on the ground for a little while friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But he declines, because someone has to look out for the little guy, right? You better think about this, look at that. Look at me. Last chance, yes or no? No. Okay. It's kind of a springsteen -y, working class hero vibe that I dig. Number 11, Friday the 13th. There's nothing more exciting than learning the shocking identity of the killer in a movie. We weren't doing anything, we were just messing up. <laughs> Audiences spend Friday the 13th thinking that the summer camp in the movie is haunted by the ghost of Jason, who drowned in the lake. It only makes sense that he would be the vengeful monster killing all the counselors. So audiences were shocked when it was revealed that Mrs. Voorhees, Jason's mom, was the real killer. Jason was my son, and today is his birthday. Where's Mr. Christie? Oh, I couldn't let them open this place again. Mrs. Voorhees is a much scarier human villain, but that doesn't stop the movie from shocking you with the supernatural, too. <laughs> After overcoming Mrs. Voorhees, Counselor Alice falls asleep in a canoe. And who should leap out of the water to pull her under but a decomposing Jason? He's still there. <laughs> Number 10, Arrival. This amazing sci-fi film stunned audiences twice. When strange ships land on Earth, linguist Louise Banks must try to communicate with the aliens. I'm human. What are you? In other invasion movies, the aliens almost always arrive intent on destruction. But in a refreshing twist, the aliens want to offer the world their language. Which 
which isn't constrained by time, and allows them to see past, present, and future at once. What is your purpose here? Then, in a bittersweet turn of events, we later learn that the flashbacks Louise has been seeing throughout the movie are not flashbacks at all, but visions of the future brought on by her ability to understand the alien language. How can you know the future? It's a gut punch, and one we won't forget anytime soon. Number 9. The Mist The original ending of Stephen King's novella The Mist leaves readers wondering what happens to the characters. But in the 2007 adaptation, viewers got an ending, a twisty one filled with despair. <laughs> When a deadly, monster-filled mist descends upon a small town, a group of survivors, including artist David and his son Billy, break out of a grocery store and drive away. Their car runs out of gas, leaving the group trapped. The book ends here, but in the movie, David shocks everyone by killing the group, even his son, to save them from a worse fate. As he's about to turn the gun on himself, surprise, the mist clears. It was all for nothing. <laughs> Number 8. The Prestige Christopher Nolan loves a plot twist. See Memento, Inception, or pretty much any of his other works as proof. But we wanted to focus on this magical thriller and the two twists it pulls off. In Nolan fashion, it is a bit complicated, so bear with us. The story hinges on the successful execution of the transported man trick. Robert Angier pulls off the trick by creating a clone of himself and allowing the original version of himself to drown. And I win. Because no one cares about the man in the box, the man who disappears. When a dead Angier is discovered, rival magician Alfred Borden is blamed and executed. But that's not all. We, we the one who went into the box. Oh, the one who came back out. We took turns. Turns out Borden has a secret too. He is an identical twin. And that's how he pulled off his own version of the trick. It's nothing easy about two men sharing one life. Number 7. Mulholland Drive Buckle up for this one, folks. David Lynch's Mulholland Drive is a weird one. Just relax. When aspiring actress Betty arrives in LA, she finds a strange woman in her apartment. Hi. Do you work with my aunt? No. I, I, I'm sorry, it's, it's none of my business. The woman calls herself Rita, but is suffering from amnesia and can't remember who she is. What is it, Rita? I thought when I woke up, I thought sleep would do it. What's wrong? I don't know who I am. At one point, Betty and Rita look for a woman named Diane. They find a dead body, but it's unclear if the woman is Diane or not. Then, in a strange turn of events, Betty wakes up, but she's not Betty. She's Diane. What do you want? My lamp and dishes? Come on, Diane, it's been three weeks. The story continues to unfold in bewildering style until Diane, or Betty, shoots herself. She was the dead body all along. Or was she? Listen, this could take hours to unpack. Number six, Shutter Island. I'm Deputy Warden McPherson, gentlemen. Welcome to Shutter Island. This psychological thriller follows U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels as he investigates the disappearance of a psychiatric facility patient. So this female prisoner. Patient. Excuse me, patient. Teddy and his partner follow a series of convoluted clues as they look for Rachel Solando, 
the missing patient who drowned her three children. She considered dangerous? You could say that. She killed all three of her children. She drowned them in the lake behind her house. The clues become increasingly hard to decipher, leaving the audience to wonder, seriously, what the heck is going on? Is, is there a reason you keep referring to your patient in the past tense, Doctor? Look outside, Marshal. Why do you think? But Shutter Island makes up for all that creeping uncertainty and delivers on two shocking twists. I found a doctor in a cave out by the cliffs, but you'll never get to her. I don't doubt it, considering she's not real. First, the movie reveals the investigation is an elaborate trick. Teddy is actually a patient at the hospital who murdered his wife. You were committed here by court order 24 months ago. Your crime is terrible, one you can't forgive yourself for, so you invented another self. The second twist? Rachel isn't real, but based on Teddy's wife, who drowned their children before Teddy killed her. Dark stuff. Where are the kids? Number five, Parasite. Parasite won big at the Oscars, and for very good reason. <laughs> The Kim family schemes their way into the employee of the wealthy Park family, partying it up in the Park's huge house when they're gone. But when the old housekeeper shows up one night, a shocking discovery is made. Turns out there's a bunker in the basement of the Park's house where the old housekeeper hides her husband, who's on the run from loan sharks. Sound wild? Just wait. Everything comes to a head at the park son's birthday party. <laughs> the housekeeper's husband breaks out and sparks a murderous rampage that ends with Mr. Kim killing Mr. Park. Two of the best twists of all time, no doubt. Number four, Get Out. Jordan Peele's directorial debut was one of the best films of 2017, and filled with twists to boot. So how long has this been going on, this, this thing? <laughs> when Chris, who's African-American, goes to meet his white girlfriend's family, things feel a little off, to say the least. <laughs> Strange housekeepers, a deranged brother, hypnotism, all red flags. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. The first twist comes when the Armitage's plans for Chris are revealed. Turns out the family is literally auctioning Chris off to the highest bidder. A horrifying, insane twist in its own right. But wait, there's more. Rose, we gotta go. We gotta go now. Okay. Okay. Is everything okay? I'll tell you in the car. But we gotta go right now. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. When Chris gets away and the cops show up, the audience assumes the worst. But it's not the cops. Chris! It's Chris's best friend, Rod, there to save the day. I mean, I told you not to go in that house. Number three, the others. Who are the real ghosts? And can we ever be sure? According to this spooky 2001 flick, no, we cannot. <laughs> the Others is a fairly standard horror film at first. Grace Stewart and her two young children, Anne and Nicholas, are haunted by ghosts. We've all seen this movie before, right? Do speak to them! Why? They're dead! But then the twists start coming. Turns out the ghosts haunting the house? They're alive. Grace realizes this when she walks in on a seance where the others are trying to contact the dead. Something about a pillow. Is that how she killed you? And then comes the second twist. Grace and her children are the real ghosts. Grace learns that she smothered her children and ended her own life and had been haunting the home unknowingly ever since. We know the woman went mad. Number two, Gone Girl. This one's for all you cool girls out there. You have to see this. This movie completely tricks you in the beginning. We will organize searches, put up flyers. We're going to hold a press conference tomorrow. We're have a press conference? Yeah, I want to get the word out, right? When Amy Dunn disappears, everyone thinks her husband Nick is responsible, even the audience. 
man of my dreams, father of my child, this man of mine may kill me. But the first huge plot twist comes with a bang. I am so much happier now that I'm dead, Amy says. We then learn how Amy staged the whole thing. With the help of the unwitting, bump up your life insurance. Purchase getaway car, Craigslist. It is a shocking turn, but not the most shocking thing in the movie. When Amy decides to come back to Nick, it seems inevitable that he'll leave her. But she reveals she froze some of his sperm and impregnated herself, tying them together forever. I didn't touch you. You didn't need to. We're with Tyler Perry here. These two are the most messed up people we know. You and Amy under the same roof? You should pitch that as reality television. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Psycho. Ah, the mother of all double twists. Hitchcock's horror masterpiece may be spoiled for everyone today, even if you've never seen it, but that doesn't change just how shocking the movie was in 1960. Marion Crane, played by Janet Lee, is on the run after stealing some money. She stops at the Bates Motel and meets Norman, who runs the motel with his mother, Mrs. Bates. Uh, if, if, if you want anything, just, just tap on the wall. I'll, I'll be in the office. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bates. Norman Bates. Then, in one of the most famous scenes in cinema, someone kills Marion in the shower. <laughs> Janet Lee was a massive star at the time, so it was a shock to see her gone so quickly. The final twist reveals that Norman is the killer, and he killed Mrs. Bates, but manifests her as an alternate personality. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Did you call any of these twists? Let us know in the comments below. You've been up here too long, man. You've lost your marbles. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.